Well, it looks like that Matt Hancock might be just in a bit more uh, spot of hot water than he already really is. Now, I've already said, I think, in, in my opinion, that Hancock is ultimately going to be the fall guy for a lot, and I mean a lot of the problems that we faced during the NHS. It certainly seems that, well, Boris and everyone else is is pretty much fine to sort of, shall we say, start putting the blame on Hancock. And I think this must be something that, don't get me wrong, we've got to say, if Hancock is to blame for, uh, you know, some of the, the mistakes that went wrong in the pandemic, then absolutely he should take blame. But we have to watch very, very carefully that people like Boris and anyone else who's involved, certainly <coughs> in the whole, uh, well, <coughs> pandemic fiasco uh, that went on, and the numerous mistakes that we we have already seen were made during the during the pandemic. That the blame for who, wh who for who made those mis mistakes, for who made them, takes that responsibility and that is not allowed to be passed on to Hancock. Now, I'm not defending Hancock. I want to make that expressly clear. What I'm saying, at least what I'm trying to say to you is, look, Hancock will have a lot to answer for, certainly with the COVID inquiry coming forward. But we must resist the temptation to go, it's Hancock's fault for everything, because we know that was not the case. We know absolutely that was not the case. And if, as we have already seen, that Hancock has been lined up to be the fall guy uh, for a lot of the bad decisions made during the pandemic, and don't get me wrong, he will be responsible for them, uh, certainly some of them, but ultimately he will not be, shall we say, not only responsible himself, maybe he will jointly share responsibility for a ton of other things. That is what I'm trying to get across. Do not be so quick to blame Hancock on many of these things, even though he is, he does have a lot to answer for and is to blame for quite a lot of things. Don't be so quick to blame Hancock because I think, to be honest, the further this COVID inquiry goes on, I think the more, uh, shall we say, the intention by many of the people in government will be go, oh, well, that wasn't me, that was Hancock. And at that point, we have to let the inquiry take its pace and decide who really is to blame. So do not be so quick to, <coughs> shall we say, blame Hancock, even though I will agree he has a lot to answer for. But this is why we are having the COVID inquiry. This is why it is going on. This is why it is doing its fact-finding mission. This is what it is doing. However, we did say Hancock is in yet another spot of hot water this morning, because if these uh, text turn out to be true. Hancock at the moment is saying that these uh, sort of these WhatsApp messages uh, are are ridiculous. Like I say, we'll get into his his, his defense and, and what uh, his team had to say about this, but we'll get into that. But first, as always, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below there are links to my Patreon page <coughs> and a one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee. We can well buy me coffee, <laughs> and there is the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there is the Pony Club down below as well. And of course, today is Wednesday, so there will be a new video out for all the Pony Clubbers, as well as the Patreon members as well. We'll be talking about Michael Gove's interesting new plan that he wants to sort of put forward. So if you want to see that, like I say, uh, sign up to the Patreon, sign up to the Pony Club, and like I say, not only will you get access to that today, but you'll get access to a whole range of other videos that we've made for the channel as well. So, just what has been released in these WhatsApp messages. So, what we have seem to have seen here, or at least where these texts originally came from, that were given originally, uh, or at least passed on, to the Telegraph journalist, journalist uh, Isabella Oakenshaw, who, if you may remember, did help to pen Matt Hancock's uh, diary, uh, diaries, or called the Pandemic Diaries. <coughs> so, this would be sort of interesting, and who where this leak came from, who who gave this. Obviously, it's still sort of very early, early days, so we don't know 
uh, who was the leaker, where these leaks came from. We don't even know yet if these are actual, genuine messages as well. So I want to stress that as well. So um, these, at least the texts, were dated just days before the publication of COVID-19, our action plan for adult social care. And that was a government document that was going to basically set out, this is how we are going to keep the care system functioning during the pandemic. And according to the, the these messages, Hancock originally said, well, Hancock said that Witty's advice to test everyone entering care homes represented a, quote, good positive step and that we must put it in the document. To which an aide responded that he had sent the request to action, meaning that the aide had said who was sorting out the document that that would have to be in the sort of the document and sorted out. However, Hancock then messaged again later in the day, saying that he would, quote, rather leave out the communication to test everyone entering care homes from the community and, quote, just commit to test and isolate and all going into care from hospital saying, I do not think uh, the community commitment adds anything, and it muddies the waters, he said. So, yeah, <coughs> overall, I can say this does not look good uh, for, for Hancock, that's for sure. But of course, if you want some more context behind these and how bad this was, the ONS statistics do show that from March of 2020 to January of 2022, there are around 43,000 deaths involving uh, COVID in care homes in England. So uh, that is a lot to involve. And it gets even worse because, again, when you look at the figures and when some of these deaths occurred, 17,000 of them, 17,000 of them occurred in the four months between Hancock being given the advice and it being implemented. So because Hancock did not implement this decision as quickly as he should have, there are potentially at least 17,000 deaths potentially on his hand. I say potentially because, <coughs> well, I think this is something we're going to have to leave to the COVID inquiry. But ultimately, I think Hancock's, shall we say, reputation uh, after this inquiry is doomed. So, even if, shall we say, you know, he's not fully to blame for all the decisions made in the in the pandemic, I think there's going to be enough stuff on him, certainly to render him, and I think potentially a couple of other people in government, politically toxic for the rest of their careers. No one will want them in in. No one will want Hancock in the Tory party. That, that's for sure. But of course, <coughs> now we get to Hancock's response. So, Hancock has said or at least his spokesperson has said, that it is outrageous that this is a distorted account of the pandemic and he's being pushed with partial leaks, spun to fit an anti-lockdown agenda, which would have cost hundreds of thousands of lives if followed. What the messages do show is a lot of people working hard to save lives. The story is spun on care homes is completely wrong. What the messages show is that Mr. Hancock pushed for testing on those going into care homes when the testing was available. So that's what uh, obviously his spokesperson said. They obviously say, no, this is a distortion. This is, you know, only partial uh, messages that have been released. Ultimately, at the end of the day, <coughs> Hancock will have to ultimately answer and, and, and show proof that, no, that was the case. And this is why, you know, the COVID inquiry is, I think, going to be bringing back to people a lot of the memories of what was going on during the pandemic. And I think this is going to hurt the Tories really bad. And they know it. Because this was something that Boris Johnson, for so long, for at least two years, resisted starting this inquiry, saying, oh, no, it's too soon. It's too soon to start this inquiry because... All the Tories knew, even they were even saying it privately. We, we covered it, and, you know, back in uh, 2021 when they were talking about sort of initially starting this inquiry. The Tories were like, no, we don't want this inquiry yet because we know how bad it is going to be for us. So 
this is something come uh, certainly a, a general election. Maybe as more of this sort of comes out, it is only going to damage the Tories more and more. And of course, as we've said, the potentiality of a general election this year, uh, depending certainly, I think, now on the May local elections. I don't think the ERG are openly going to rebel by the sounds of it. I think there might be maybe a token rebellion. Maybe you'll get like maybe about 10 or so <coughs> ERG members will will say, no, we're not uh, voting for uh, this new framework. But ultimately, end of the day, um, I, I can't see uh, this sort of going in the, the Tories direction. I think this is going to bring up back people's a lot of memories of what was going on back there. And just once again, show that they are completely unfit to govern. So, as always, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And, of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and one of the link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And, as always, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, we'll see you all next time.